Good morning everyone, my name is Piet Nordea, I am the director of the University of Stellenbosch Business School who put uh, today's program together. We are very proud of our association with EOH and uh, I wish you a very good uh, day and a half program. Um, for those of you who were elected to the board as new members, I congratulate you on that appointment and uh, I don't have to tell you that you carry a huge responsibility. Uh, EOH has been in the news uh, quite significantly over the last months uh, for some bad reasons and for some good reasons and we are here to make sure that those good reasons start to work for the company and your role in that is going to be absolutely critical. Board members do not only carry, as you know, uh, a straightforward fiduciary responsibility, they have to apply their minds, uh, show due diligence, have a critical mindset. In fact, in our previous study that we did on, on Steinhoff, we found that one of the key aspects in the destruction of value in Steinhoff was because the board uh, had a loss of independence and critical mindset. So uh, this is very, very important and I know that you will take this uh, quite seriously. So um, all I can say is enjoy the day. Uh, I hope you get a lot out of it uh, to apply directly into this magnificent company and I wish you every success. Well, I think we, in South Africa at the moment, we have a kind of, I would call it the deep dichotomy between the, the theory and the practice of corporate governance. If, if you look at South Africa from the outside, uh, we are actually lauded as a country with a very, very good code of corporate governance. We all know the King 1, 2, 3 and 4. We've got the Companies Act as amended uh, to make sure that uh, ethics and uh, corporate governance is properly structured and taken care of also from a legal perspective. Um, we have many organizations that look after this. I think of the Institute of Directors that does magnificent work in training people in corporate governance. I think of the Ethics Institute uh, where I'm a little bit involved. So, in a certain sense one can say South Africa is in an emerging economy one of the leaders in terms of corporate governance and ethics. And that was the case until roughly four or five years ago when suddenly we found that this bubble of theory uh, was completely destroyed, as it were, by the, by, by the double move of, of state capture, which we later had to add corporate capture. And most of this capture stuff relates basically to two aspects. One is individuals who in their own individual capacity had a complete lack of moral judgment. And secondly, uh, a board oversight that was just not there. Uh, and all of us who read the newspapers know the examples. So, Daniel, I, I would say uh, we don't have to do more to, to increase our theoretical and policy environment. What we now need to do is what I think will happen today, is to instill in us the practices that gives effect to what I think is a fantastic world-class policy environment. It, 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 let me first say I, I was appointed as one of the first professors of ethics in universities to, to do a more academic study of the kind of questions that you ask. And I must admit, Daniel, I've not seen a single piece of research that says uh, creating a culture comes from the bottom. It is unfortunately or fortunately a very strong uh, leadership capability and, and the board has two basic responsibilities. It's firstly to be in their own persons persons of integrity and character, and hopefully that is not an issue. And secondly, to assist management in creating the culture of ethics and governance, and that is the more difficult part of it. It's no use we appoint Mr. von Koller, a brilliant person, business-wise, very honest, a man of the church, whatever else, uh, uh, but the, the culture below his feet are just rotten. I mean, that, that is the problem, and what, what the board does is to help management to ensure that over time we create the culture and that requires sometimes very tough decisions or like really rewarding people well for good governance and, and, and proper values and on the other hand to make sure that consequences are quick and for everyone to see when there are lapses of governance.
I, I'm very ambiguous on this one. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not an economist that's on the one side and then the other <laughs> side, but, but it is a tough call. I, I, I think unless uh, uh, Mr. Ramaphosa shows some backbone in the ESCOM case, uh, we are entering a very difficult time. I mean, the, the recent announcement just last week of an additional 59 billion uh, bailout to ESCOM without the preconditions that was initially said. We bas basically th throwing taxpayers' money down a, a bottomless pit. And we all know that Moody's response to that was quite uh, cautious and mm -hmm. said, well, um, if they add SOE uh, debt to mm -hmm. the normal state debt, uh, we go right beyond 60%, which mm. in global terms is not that much, but in South African terms, it's massive. Already, you know, repayment of debt is uh, the biggest uh, single item in our budget. So I think, uh, unfortunately, private business cannot function without energy, and 95% of South African energy comes from this country. So I don't want to belabor this point, but unless we now take really tough political decisions, to get a way out of the ESCOM problem, I think we are entering a very mm. tough way, which mean, might end, and I don't want, actually want to say it, we might end up with uh, approaching the IMF, which is politically anathema in South mm. Africa. I mean, that, that is what nobody wants. Mm. So, uh, that on the one side. On, on the other side, um, our, our shares are now cheap. Uh, as a rand weakens, we become a place where we, and, and as we just see, uh, saw PepsiCo that, that thought that they could buy uh, uh, into Pioneer Fruits. Uh, I mean, so that is the alternative signal. So in a, in a way, Daniel, I think we, we are on a cutting edge situation. We in the fork in the road, and if our government can get its act together with more backbone and willing to take a little bit more risk in terms of politics, mm -hmm. uh, and we can bring the private sector on board, we, we actually have the people and the capabilities to make South Africa a fantastic mm. country. But unless that happens, I think we will remain in a bit of an uncertain phase. But with EOH uh, doing the work that we're doing, uh, we look forward to, to them coming on board and that their share price goes up and that they add much more value to the economy and become what I think they can become. So I'm, I'm quite excited.